Welcome to Engineer's Mindset. Now I'm going to show you how to differentiate three functions from first principle. So let's say we have um, find the y dx from first principle given y equals cos x. Okay. So we have that y equals cos x. Okay. So I said that if I reduce y by change in y. Okay, so y plus change in y, I will also increase what x by change in x. So this will simply give me cos x plus change in x. Now at this point, of course, recall from trigonometry that um, recall from three identity you have that if you have cos cos a plus b. Okay, from the ISD, cos A cos B, this actually gave us cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Okay, from the ISD, cos A cos B actually gave us this. So this actually looks like what? Cos X cos change in X. So which means I can also call this value cos x plus change in x can be called to be what? cos x cos change in x minus sine x sine change in x okay so if that's the case then in place of cos x cos change in x I will simply what? replace it with this value so I'm not going to have that y plus change in y is not equal to simply cos x Cos change in x minus sine x, sine change in x. So I will have y plus change in y is now equal to cos x, cos change in x minus sine x, sine change in x. So I have this, okay? So I say when you get to this point, all you need to do is simply what? Send y over to this side of the equation. Since y here is positive, if you cross the other both side, it becomes negative. So on this side of the equation now, I'm left with simply words change in y. Okay, so change in y is now equal to I have cos x cos change in x minus sine x sine change in x. Now bring y over here it becomes minus y. So I have this. Okay? Now but remember that from the question y was given as what? Simply cos s. Y equals cos s. Okay? So y is equal to cos s. Since every term here are all in x, let's also make this y to be a term in s. So y is simply cos s, which means in place of this y, I will simply write it cos x. Alright, so I will have change in y to now be equal to cos x cos change in x minus sine x sine change in x okay, this becomes minus in place of y we have minus cos x. So we have this, okay. Now let's draw um, cos x together. I have cos x here, I have cos x here, let's bring them together. So I will simply have change in y is equal to cos x, cos change in x. Okay, so bring minus cos x here, you have minus cos x, okay, minus sine x, sine change in x. You have this. So notice now that there is cos x here. There's also cos s here, so which means I can factorize it out. I can factor out cos s. If I do that, I will simply have change in y is equal to cos s is common between these two. So simply bring it out cos x, open the bracket. Now here your left is cos change in x minus here your left is simply what 1. So if you expand this bracket now, Cos s times cos change in s simply gives you cos s cos change in s. And then cos s times minus 1 simply gives you minus cos s. So it's still the same thing. Okay.
okay so minus sign s sign change in s so you have this so at this point what you do is simply was divide both sides by change in s because we are looking for the y the s so if this is change in y that means we have to divide both sides by what's change in s so we have something like change in y over change in s so divide both sides by change in s you are simply going to have change in y all over change in s is now equal to uh, this is cos s into cos change in s minus 1 okay minus sine s sine change in s okay all over change in s so you have this now we can as well break this equation to be simply change in y over change in s is simply equal to so breaking down this equation now i will have cos x into cos change in s minus 1 all over change in s minus sine s sine change in s all over change in s so you can as well break that equation to be that okay all right so at this point now you have change in y all over change in s to now be equal to okay so let's now rewrite um it's still the same thing so let's let's make it look like it's factorization like i'm factoring as i guess when it's an s out let's rewrite the situation a little bit and see what we're going to have we'll have that cos s into cos change in s minus one all over change in s minus so we simply have sine s multiplying by sine change in s all over change in s so it's still the same thing but now, but now it looks like i'm factoring as simply with sine x from a but it's basically what the same thing now at this point this is what you do you simply want to take limits okay of course you can only get the y dx when you take limits the y dx is simply what equal to limits as change in s tends to zero of the function change in y all over change in x okay so that simply makes that wherever i see change in x simply putting the value as simply what zero then if i do that then this function change in y over change in s automatically becomes dy dx okay all right so i will now have that dy dx is now equal to limits as change in x tends to zero of the function. Um, okay, the function change in y or change in x simply equal to this whole value. So I will simply have cos x into cos change in x minus one all over change in x. Okay, minus sine s into sign change in s all over change in s so i have this okay now i want you to do something please take note um pause limit as change in s tends to zero of the function sign change in x all over change in x this is actually what one from L for beta's rule. Okay, so from L for beta's rule, this limit as change in S tends to zero, sign change in S all over change in S is actually what one. Okay, so therefore now dy ds is now equal to so put in the value of the limits now. Change in S is equal to zero. So wherever I see change in S, simply put the value as zero. But also have in mind that sign change in x all over change in x is actually equal to what? 1. Okay, therefore I'm going to have here I have cos x. Okay, into I have here cos change in x. So in place of change in x, simply put in the limit as was 0. So change in x becomes 0. So I have simply cos 0 
minus one. Okay, all over in place of change that will also go for zero. Okay, minus I have here sine s multiplied by the whole of this thing of change in the test to the function sine change in the test by change in the test is actually was one. So that means the whole of this value is equal to one. So I have this. Alright, so the y in x is now equal to this is cos x into cos zero is simply one minus one all over zero minus okay sine x. Okay, so at this point, alright, so you have here one minus one is zero. So the y in x becomes this is the y in x equal to cos x into zero divides by zero minus simply sine x okay so of course sine x multiplied by the simply sine x so you have this okay all right so from here cos x multiplied zero any value multiplied by zero simply gives us zero so it means that y the x is simply equal to zero so this is cos x multiplied by 0 gives you 0. So you have 0 divided by 0 minus sine s. So the y in s is simply 0 over 0 simply remains 0 minus sine s. And that's simply implied that the y in s is simply equal to minus sine s. Alright guys, so that is how you differentiate cos x from first principle. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to differentiate an x from first principle. Meanwhile, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like the video, share your thoughts in the comment section. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.